Howdy folks, Dan here with Grits and Glamour. It's another gorgeous day up here in the Pacific Northwest in Ocean Shores, Washington. Today I'm going to show you how I smoke a pork shoulder to make pulled pork sandwiches. We're going to go in here and we're going to make a homemade hog injection and then we're going to apply my homemade dry rub. Let's go inject some meat. Okay, folks, we uh, injected our pork shoulder. I'm using smaller cuts of meat because in an RV you just don't have fridge space for an 18-pound pork shoulder. So this is a 5-pound pork shoulder. We injected it with our hog injection. Uh, recipe to that is in the description. I'm going to lightly pat this down with paper towel. put our rub on it. This is a rub that I make myself. Uh, I have a lot of requests for it. So uh, I personally think it's very good. So we're, we're looking at marketing it. You want to put this on liberally. We're going to do a time lapse real quick so we can get through this pretty quick. Okay, we've got our pork shoulder done. This is actually a pork sirloin. Normally you just use these for roasts. I get them really cheap. I just happen to have that in my fridge. It's a tougher cut of meat. So I'll be curious to see how this turns out. Uh, meanwhile, I've had my, my smoker going for about 20 minutes. Uh, it usually takes it about 30 minutes to come up to temp, 250 degrees. We want these to kind of sit out for, you know, a good 30 minutes or so. Let the uh, um, dry rub get on there and kind of stick to it really good. And also brings lets the meat come up to somewhat room temperature. Okay, this is our meat. It's been sitting uh, with the rub on it for about 30 minutes. Looking kind of juicy. We're going to put this in the uh, smoker. Uh, 250 degrees for an hour and a half to two, two hours uh, per pound but since these are smaller cuts of meat I'm banking that probably they're gonna probably be ready in about an hour and a half per pound Put my meat and put my temperature probe in on the smaller cut of meat because it's going to be done faster. Just give me kind of a baseline of where we're at. Alrighty, let's wait. Okay, this has been going about two hours. I filled my uh, wood chip box up twice. This will be the third time I've already filled it here. Looking pretty decent. Uh, we're going to spray that a little bit with some straight apple juice. 
We're probably going to let this go about one more hour before we wrap it. It's looking pretty delicious. I want it to dry out here. gonna have to fill our water up here it just about ran out yeah, when you re fill this water you want to make sure you put in some warm water don't put in straight cold water then it has to heat back up so I'm gonna put in a little bit more of this and then we're gonna come back about an hour and and, and wrap them up all right let's see what we have here after three hours you have to excuse my dirty oven mitts. These are for the grill. Pretty nasty. Put that out. Internal temp is 179 right now. What we're going to do is we're going to pull this out and we're going to wrap it. And once you wrap it, you're no longer putting smoke on it. You're just baking it. So now... I just use cheap, cheap apple juice. That's all you need. You put about a half inch of apple juice in there. That's so good. It's good enough. Now we're just going to put some aluminum foil over that. Half inch of Great apple juice. We're gonna wrap it. And basically, at this point, you're no longer putting smoke on it. You're just cooking it. Okay, I'm gonna put this in here. like that. We're going to keep this at 250. In fact, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to lower this one rack. So let's do that real quick here. I want a little bit more heat on it. Lower this down to the next rack. We're going to cook this, like I said, at 250 until the internal temperature comes up to 205 degrees. Okay, our meat has been on the smoker. The internal temperature is 205 degrees. We've drained the liquid off the pan here. And quite honestly, I'm being kind of lazy today. I've got a lot going on. Normally, I would do my own baked beans, I would do my own barbecue sauce, but that's not happening. So what I've done is I've reserved some of the liquid here, and I'm going to add this smoky liquid to some baked beans. Um, our, the lighting here just, just really doesn't do it justice, so you got to see this. You've got a nice crust on here. So, what we're going to do now, we're going to baste it. I use, I use Stubbs barbecue sauce. It's a, it's a Texas barbecue sauce. I've never... I, I mean, really. I mean, it's like... You go to a Texas smokehouse or anything like that, you're going to basically get Stubbs. It, it's pretty much the same vinegary sauce. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to base this here pretty good. You'll have to excuse our lighting. Um, RV lighting is not exactly um, conducive to <laughs> video production work. So hopefully you can see all this. I'm going to base that real good. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to flip this over.
flip it over this way. And put this on the top. And I'm going to put this in a smoker like this. And what we're doing after this, we're putting it in the smoker at 175 degrees for one hour. And what that does, it keeps the meat warm and it lets the meat rest. And your meat is going to absorb all that moisture back. Let's get the sides here. And with that dry heat now, it's going to put a nice crust on this. Like I said, I'm being kind of lazy. I did not feel like doing beans on the smoker and all that today, so I just bought some canned beans, but... Like I said, you can, you can reserve some of that liquid there, smoky liquid, and just add it to your canned beans, Bush's baked beans or whatever. Just add it to it. Adds a little bit more smoky flavor to it. So what we're going to do after this, like I said, we're going to put that in the smoker, and we're basically letting this rest. Oh, that's a good sign. <laughs> it's just falling up already. That's a good sign there. Okay. Now, one other thing I want to show you when it comes to smoking meat. That's just falling off already. That's a good sign. I'm happy with that. What you can do is you can take your meat probe, your temp probe here, and... <clears throat> You can press that through the meat. If you have some resistance, you need to go about, you know, about an hour longer. This sirloin I was pretty concerned about because it's pretty tough. And I've got some resistance in that. So I'm hoping that the next hour that it rests, you know, it's it's gonna it's gonna rest and it's gonna cook 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 a little bit more. What you want, you want to put that through that meat there with very little resistance. Very little resistance. And you can you can literally probe the meat and you can tell what's done and what's not. I think I need to save this and eat it. We'll put that back up there like a jigsaw puzzle. That's a good sign though. It's getting close. So we're gonna we're gonna put this back on the smoker. 175 degrees for one hour. All right, folks, this is the real test of pulled pork. When it just kind of falls off like this, you just tear it apart. What I do when I pull pork, I just kind of take it apart here and kind of squeeze it. Yeah, this is done. Took us about seven hours for this total. I just take my, just kind of break this up like that. That's our pork shoulder here. It's falling off the bone. I did. I just kind of squeeze it. This is actual pulled pork. It's supposed to just fall off. You just squeeze it and it just falls apart like that.
pretty much just fall apart like it's doing. I'm going to go back through here and basically all I do is I kind of squeeze it. It's kind of hard to explain. I'm going to kind of squeeze it and break it up. The rest of this here. It's a big old bone for Jake. Yeah, he knows when the smoker's going. He just can't wait all day long because he knows that shoulder bone is waiting for him. You literally should be able to just take this like this and just squeeze it and just fall apart. That's pulled pork. I do I just kind of squeeze it here like that kind of squeeze it together and just kind of break apart see how that's turning out well I see the dogs are already growling over that bone and this is what we call pulled pork A few tough pieces here, like that right there, it's kind of tough. For the most part, we're pretty good to go. Just keep going through here. Just falling apart. So I told Rebecca on her way home from school pick up some uh, barbecue beans. She went to the grocery, the discount outlet store, and she picked up this special here. New recipe. So I'm just glad that I, I, I reserved some of that sauce, that liquid from our pork and I added that to it should be able to just squish that up like that and it'll break it up we're about ready to eat y'all and cutting it. I wanted to bring this out in the light so you could see our pulled pork sandwich. We got some tater salad and some baked beans. If you like cooking videos, uh, there's a couple channels I'd like to call out and one is Papa Texas, right down there in Texas, and uh, Billy and Rhonda with Strong's Adventures. Uh, really great channels, uh, really good cooking. Billy and Rhonda especially do Dutch oven cooking. Uh, Papa Texas does some Dutch oven cooking, but he does other cooking too. So, anyway, if you like this video, like and subscribe for future content. Thanks for watching.